Okay, in this video we're going to talk about number three on the 2016 Calc AB and BC exams, and it's a problem where they give you basically a graph of the first derivative and ask you a couple questions about it. Um, but they actually tell you it's an accumulation function, so you got to use a second fundamental theorem to figure out that you're given the graph of the derivative. But it's the graph of the derivative. You're pretty much always given the graph of the derivative. So here's the graph, and we're told that g of x is the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt, which means by the second fundamental theorem that uh, g prime would be f of x. So we're looking at the graph of the derivative. So first question, um, does g have a max, min, or neither at x equals 10? All right, so the first thing I would do is I would make clear that I understand that g prime of x is f of x. So we have that. And then if you look at the graph, uh, there's 10. And you can see that um, f of x does not have a sign change there, which means that um, g of x doesn't have a max or a min. Um, g of x does actually have a point of inflection, but you're not asked anything about that, so don't bother talking about it. So g of x has neither max nor min at x equals 10 because g prime of x uh, does not have a sign change. And there you go. So the next question is actually going to ask us about points of inflection. Um, specifically, um, does g of x have a point of inflection at x equals 4? So there's 4. So I'm going to say yes, it definitely does. Um, so since g prime of x which is equal to f of x, has a relative maximum at x equals 4, uh, we know that g of x has a point of inflection. Um, so a really common misconception is that the derivative needs to be differentiable at a point at which the function, the original function, has a point of inflection. That's not the case at all. What you really just need is for the first derivative to um, change direction, which means that if it has a maximum or a minimum to change direction, um, but a lot of people prefer to give the alternate uh, solution, um, which is actually a little safer, but I just don't like it as much, um, since g prime of x changes direction, so it goes from increasing to decreasing um, at x equals 4. This is actually a function that has a lot of points of inflection, um, and I'm kind of glad they didn't make us draw it, because that would be, it has a lot of parts. Um, so we can just say that g prime changes direction at x equals 4, so g of x has a point of inflection at x equals 4. Um, so yeah, f of x, which is g prime, doesn't need to be differentiable at those points. Um, so the next part is absolute max and min, which generally speaking I enjoy doing, uh, but since there are so many regions, I did not enjoy doing this. Um, so absolute max min, I always use the candidates test. So to use the candidates test, um, I need to tell them why I'm looking at certain points. So uh, the absolute max and absolute min will have to occur at either an endpoint of the interval, um, which would be negative 4 and 12, or at a um, critical point. So the critical points are many. So the critical points are negative 2, 2, 6, and 10. So we have a lot of things that we're going to evaluate. Um, you could make an argument that you don't need to look at um, some of the values because they're, they're not maximums or minimums. But it's almost more work to do that, so I usually just check everything. Um, so those are the critical points because g prime of x equals 0 at them. There's actually no place that g prime is um, undefined, so we don't have to worry about that. So now what I usually do is set up a table. So my table has x and then g of x, and it's going to have the endpoints, all the critical points, and I'm going to try to figure out g for each of those. And I know that g of x is the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. Um, and I can go through and I can find all the areas, so I'm going to actually do that. So uh, negative 4 to negative 2 is uh, negative 4, and then you can figure out all the other ones are either 8s, negative 8s, or negative 4s, which is nice because you don't have to do a lot of work. And then I'm not going to be able to fit this here, so I'm going to start a new page. Okay, so g of 2 I know is definitely 0 because the integral from 2 to 2 is 0, so I'm going to fill that in. And now let's find all of them. So g of negative 4 is going to be the integral from 2 to negative 4, f of t dt, uh, which is, I'm going to change the sign and flip the bounds. The negative of the integral from negative 4 to 2 of f of t dt. It's actually, it's just a lot easier if you show the work. Um, so that's going to give me negative 4. Um, and then the g of negative 2 is the negative of the integral from negative 2 to 2. So I already flipped it and changed the sign. Um, and then that's going to be negative 8. Okay, so then I know that g of 2 is 0, 
And so it gets a lot easier, right? Because you know g of 2 is 0, and then between 2 and 6, uh, the function accumulates 8. So I know g of 6 is going to be 8. Um, and then from 6 to 10, uh, it loses 8, so it's going to go back down to 0. And then uh, if g of 10 is 0 and it loses 4 as it goes to 12, then g of 4 must be, uh, 12 must be negative 4. So I have all of that, and now I can find my absolute maximum, which was the actual question. So uh, the absolute minimum is negative 8, and the absolute maximum is positive 8, and by candidate's test. All right. So uh, the table that we just made is actually going to help us a lot on the next problem, which is um, we're asked where g of x is less than or equal to 0. So let's see what we can do. Um, I know a lot of the values, so I know that g of 2 is 0 because I figured that one out. Um, I knew this was, you know, you're going to add 8, so I know g of 6 is going to be 8. And then you lose 8, so I know that um, g of 10 is going to be... 0 again, and then because you lose 4, you know that g of 12 is going to be negative. So if you look, the only time on that interval, well, other than g of 2 being 0, which I'm going to get to in a second, um, it goes positive, it goes up 8, and then it goes down. So at g of 10, you hit 0, and then it stays negative, and that's the only time there where the entire function would be negative. So 10 to 12. And then if we go kind of in the opposite direction, we know that g of negative 2 is negative 8. So making that table in the previous part really helped because I could just fill these in. And the reason that that's true is because from negative 2 to 2 it accumulates 8. So if I go backwards from 2 to negative 2 I must lose 8. Um, so that's kind of the argument for why that happens. And then I knew that um, g of negative 4 is um, also negative 4. Um, so that means that uh, g of negative 4 is negative 4, g of negative 2 is negative 8. And you only get back to 0 at g of 2, so actually on that whole interval from negative 4 uh, to 2. So that would be my answer to that. Okay, so uh, I guess part D is a little interesting. The rest of it is very straightforward. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and good luck.